I bought a vacuum pump on Craigslist that clearly needs some attention. It runs and it pulls a vacuum, but sometimes the motor can't get it started. I'm taking it apart to see if I can fix it. I've never taken apart a vacuum pump. I have taken apart tons of hydraulic pumps though. And from looking at the diagrams, I kind of know what to expect in here. If you know anything about how these work, I'd really appreciate the advice. You should be able to see what's wrong here. The shaft really locks up hard. I can pull and get it to break, but it takes a lot of effort, and clearly there's something going on inside the pump. I'm kind of concerned that it might have sucked up a solid object, like a spin bar, and I don't have the equipment I need to fix that. But there are some repair kits out there, and I figured if I can replace whatever is damaged in here and get it going again, it will still be worth what I paid for it. I start by removing the pulley and the key. I actually did this earlier and it took a long time because I didn't have the right tools, but I figured out a way to get my two arm puller attached to one spoke and use leverage to get the pulley loose. Here you can see that I originally used my on camera microphone and got the terrible audio that I deserved for doing so. So I can't remember exactly what I'm talking about in this shot, but the idea is to remove the intake chamber and the shaft seals. Underneath the intake chamber is the primary pump, one of two. Inside the box is the secondary pump and the box serves as the oil reservoir. At this point I decided to turn it thrice Wittershins. I was probably deciding what to take apart first. From the diagram it looks like the primary pump can be pulled straight off and then the chamber opened up to reveal and tear down the secondary pump. I think the intake chamber is like a pressure accumulator or a resonator in a car intake. It keeps standing waves from forming in the vacuum line, which would really mess up the flow through the pump. There's also a screen in there to prevent objects from going into the pump, but I know from experience that sometimes people leave these out. I'm inspecting this surface carefully because if the pump ingested something corrosive, this is the first place it would make contact, and it looks undamaged. There's a little bit of rust, which isn't unexpected, and this should wipe right off.
Next, I go after the shaft seal. This was the second most difficult part. It's basically cemented to the pump housing, and I eventually figured this out after trying just about every tool on my bench. By the time I got it loose, I hit my memory card's capacity and the camera stopped, but the putty knife was what worked. I removed this cover because I wanted to check for a snap ring or something like that, but uh, it turned out just to be a cover for an oil passage. You'll see oil start to weep out now that I've removed it. Next, I take off the primary cover plate. These bolts have some white compound on them. I wonder if it's something I should replace when I reinstall them. With the top plate off the primary, I can see the problem. Can you? It's not the plate. There are some wear marks, but no gouges or corrosion. The veins are spring-loaded, and they're supposed to slide in the rotor, but one of them isn't moving. I tried to pull the pump out as a unit, but I forgot there's a guide pin going through the drive shaft, so you have to take the case off first, and then the veins. The case looks good. I don't see any grooves or rust in here either. I tried to pry the stuck vein out, but it was really in there. So I removed the guide pin and the spring from the other side. The valve plate looks great. I'm starting to think that this was a good investment at this point. After a couple more failed attempts to get the vein out, I had to beat it loose with a drive pin. I made a noob move when I tried to pry that vein loose. It raised the surface of the rotor, and this is a precision ground surface with the case and the rotor machined to exactly the same thickness. So before I put it back together, I'm going to have to flatten this back down. Because I've removed the primary pump with the stuck vein in it, and the pump is otherwise still assembled, I'm curious to see if the problem has gone away. You can see now that it's very easy to turn the crankshaft, which is great news. I'm going to keep going because the rebuild kit contains parts for both pumps. One of the housing bolts is recessed inside the valve plate. I see this a lot, and I knew what to expect it because it was in the parts diagram. But if you can't disassemble a unit like this with just a gentle tap, make sure you look for more bolts before you hit it harder.
This pump is really dirty inside. It's gotten condensation in there and that has contributed to rust. And it looks like the oil hasn't been changed in a while. By the way, if you buy a vacuum pump from a stranger, don't just put your finger in the oil like I did. It could have literally anything in it. My best guess is this pump was last used for refrigeration work. This is the secondary pump. That's the exhaust valve on top. Normally I wouldn't mess with this, but I'm probably going to remove it because there's rust around it. These bolts turned out to be really tight. I might want to replace them. There's no damage or excessive wear inside the secondary pump. Um, this rod goes all the way through the axle. I wasted another half hour on this thing because when I popped the E-ring loose from the shaft, it got stuck in the casting and wouldn't let the shaft loose. So just leave it alone. I was eventually able to force it down into a port and get the shaft loose. At this point, it looks like I can repair everything with the rebuild kit. I don't really like the look of the shaft. The dark markings will wipe right off, but there's a groove there that I can feel with my fingernail, and that's never good. The part's only $60, so I'm just going to order a new one. I also see some witness marks on the end where it's contacted the cover plate, so I'm going to check and make sure the clearance is good there. I have a theory as to what happened with this pump, and I kind of want to save it for another video, so if you think you know what happened to it, please let me know. And again, if you know anything about rebuilding these and how to put it back together, I'd appreciate hearing that too. Thanks for watching.